Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, 9-5 in the textbook, and it is about base E and natural logs. Um, e is a natural number, and it's approximately 2.71828. It keeps on going forever and ever with no particular pattern, and it is an irrational number. So it's kind of like pi, but it's, it's not pi, but it's irrational. It has a specific value, and we use the letter E for, to represent that number 2.7-ish, and that is called the natural number and so we're going to look at equations that have the natural number e in it we're also going to look at natural log equations and before we do that we have to start some properties okay so here we go so we have um, all these different properties here but the ones we're going to use really today are these two but we probably should go ahead and discuss some of these other ones as well so we have this particular property basically says the following. It says that if you have, for an example, a log that has a base and the of part has a base that's the same, no matter what is up here in the exponent, so if you were to evaluate this, because it's log base 5 of 5 to the x minus 2, your answer is always going to be whatever the exponent is. So if you were to evaluate this expression, we would say it equals x minus 5, x minus 2, excuse me. So for an example, let's do another one. So if you have log base 10, right, and it's 10 to the 3x power, because the base is 10 and this base is 10 and they are the same, therefore you're going to get just this exponent and let's try one more if you had the natural log and it was e for an example to the x plus one then your answer would be that's right x plus one and the reason for that is is because ln really means that it's a natural log which means this base is e and since these two bases are the same, your answer is just going to be x plus 1. So that's good to know. Okay, let's look at this next one. So this next one says that if you have a base and the exponent up in here has a log in it that has the same base, that because those bases are the same here, that your answer is going to be whatever the of part is. So let's try it again. If you have base 10 and it is raised to the common log, then because, right, this is really base 10, because these bases are the same, that means your answer is just going to be x plus 3. And likewise, if you had uh, e to the natural log of, say, x minus 1, because these really have the same base, that means your answer is just going to be the of part, which is x minus 1. So those are two really good um, properties to know. And then some other properties to know are if you have the inverse. So if you have a log base b of its inverse, it's always going to equal 1. So let's just do a couple examples of that. So if you have log base 6 of 1 sixth, then you evaluate that, that's going to equal 1, negative 1. And that makes sense because if you go back and rewrite this in exponential notation, wouldn't that be 1 sixth to the, or 1 sixth equals 6 to the negative first power? And isn't that a true statement? So it really does work. Um, and then this one here is basically just saying that no matter what base you have, it's if you have a log with any base, and the of part is 1, then the answer has to be 0 because 1 equals 7 to the 0 power, right? Anything to the 0 power is always 1. So as you can see, if I rewrite this using exponential notation, I have a true statement. And the last one, 
is basically saying if you have a log base, any base, and the of part matches, of course it has to equal one. And if you think about that, that makes a lot of sense. So if you have log base um, eight of eight, doesn't that have to be one? Because isn't eight to the first power equal eight? Or if you have the natural log of E, doesn't that have to be one? Because isn't this base E? So E to the what power equals E, that would have to be one. So if you have the base is the same and the of part matches, then the exponent is one. So the two that we're really gonna look at the most are used in this particular assignment. These two are the ones we really want to focus on the, the most. So again, if you have a base and the of part is written in exponential notation and the bases are the same, the exponent's always going to be the equivalent expression. Or if you have an exponential expression where the base matches the same base of the log, then it's going to give you just the of part. So let's get going. Okay, let's look at how to solve this equation with uh, the natural number E. There are two ways to solve it, so I'm going to first solve it the way the book does. Of course, you want to you want to isolate. So your goal is to first isolate the natural number. So we're going to use our algebra skills, and we're going to add 7 to both sides. And then we need to divide out the five. So you have to do all that first, that's a must. And then now what they say is, um, since we can't get the bases to be the same, because that's how we would have done it in 9-1, was try to get the bases the same, so in this case, um, instead of taking the common log, which is base 10, we're going to actually take the natural log of both sides. So just like what we did. Okay, so we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And the purpose of taking the natural log of both sides is that here now we have that property that we just talked about, right? Isn't this natural log really the base E? And we just said that if you have a log that has a base that matches that same base, then isn't your answer for this side going to equal negative X? So when we use that log property, that gives us negative X on this side. And then, of course, we just have the natural log of 9 fifths on this side. And of course, we want to divide out the negative one or multiply by the negative one, whichever way. And so this is our final answer. Right? And that's a, a negative natural log of nine fifths. And we go grab our calculator, and that approximately gives us negative zero point five. Eight, seven, eight. Okay, so let's try the same problem here. So again, what we did was we isolated the um, natural number. So we added seven divided by five to get the E all by itself. Then we took the natural log of both sides and then finished from there. Over here, we're gonna start off the same way. We want to isolate the natural number E. So we're gonna add seven to both sides. And we're going to divide both sides by 5. Hear that helicopter? And here's where it's going to be different. So instead of taking the natural log of both sides, we're just going to rewrite this using log notation. And this is, um, I kind of prefer this method. It seems like it's a little bit shorter. So we're just going to rewrite this statement as an exponential in log form. So since it's base e, don't we say ln, natural log, because that's basically of 9 fifths, we maybe could put a parenthesis around that, equals the exponent, correct? So all we did was rewrite it in, X, in log notation, and then from there we can just divide out the negative, and we end up getting our natural log, 
that we just had on the other side. And of course, it's gonna end up being the same decimal that we get over here. So you can see it's a little bit shorter process. So this is the process that I like a little bit better. Okay, so let's try another one. So here's another um, exponential equation that has a natural number E. And again, we wanna isolate. We wanna isolate the expression with the natural number and an E. So we want to subtract one from both sides. We want to divide out the negative 2. And then what do you think we're going to do next? Yep, one of the ways to handle it is since it's base E, instead of taking the base 10, we actually want to take base E. So we want to take the natural log of both sides. Right, so if we take the natural log, and the reason why we did the natural log was so that this base would match, because remember this natural log is really E, and we want the bases to match, because when the bases match, then we can use that uh, log property that says when you have a log base E of E to the X plus 2, it just equals X plus 2. So we're going to apply that property now. And then, of course, from there, all we have to do is subtract 2 from both sides. And when you grab your calculator and punch in the natural number, 4 minus 4, and then make sure you hit your end of parentheses on your calculators, and then hit minus 2. So you got to be careful that you're using your calculator correctly. Um, so usually your calculator will put a parentheses there, and you have to remember to end the parentheses, and then hit subtract 2. So you should definitely um, take the time to get your calculator, maybe, maybe pause the video, and double check your calculator skills because we expect you to not only be able to do the algebra, but be able to use your calculator appropriately. So again, here's the same problem. Um, and this is, this is the way I prefer. Um, it's a little bit shorter. We start off the same way where we want to isolate. Divide out that negative 2. So remember over here, we then took the natural log of both sides. So instead of doing that, what we can do instead is just simply rewrite this using log notation. So we're going to rewrite this as a log. So again, since this is base E, we write the natural log of E of 4 equals x plus 2. And then from there, we can subtract 2 from both sides. Remember, your calculator will put a parentheses there. You have to end the parentheses and then subtract 2. And of course, you'll get the same number as we get over here. So as you can see, I think that this method is just a little bit shorter. It doesn't matter which way. You really need to know both because sometimes when you're being tested, they may uh, maybe stop a step here. And if you've not seen both ways, you may not be able to answer a multiple choice question correctly. So, okay, so here we have... Uh, an equation that has the natural log in it. So um, when you see this base, this base is E. So the way they have you do it in the book, and again, there's two ways to do this, um, is to rewrite this equation where both sides have base E. So we're going to rewrite it where both sides have base E. So 2 is going to be the exponent, and all of this natural log is going to become the exponent. So again, we rewrote it where the base was e, and these became the exponent. And that's okay to do as long as you do it to the other side. So the whole point of that was that there's a log property that we talked about earlier that says if you have a base and you have a log in the exponent that has the same base, then this equals x minus 7. So that's the reason why we, we did that, because we knew we could apply that property. So since these have the same bases, we can um, 
say that this expression equals x minus 7. And then, of course, e squared. And then add 7 to both sides. So our answer is going to end up being x equals whatever e squared plus 7 is. And remember, e squared is approximately 2.7182-ish squared plus 7. There is an e key on your calculator, and it's usually hiding underneath the ln key. So you have to type that in correctly. Make sure you go find that natural uh, number e key hiding underneath the ln key. You probably have to hit your shift button. So take a moment and check that out. So you should get 14.3891, something like that. Okay, so let's try the same problem again. So here again, instead of taking and rewriting it with base e, you could simply just rewrite this equation in exponential form. So if you rewrite this in exponential form, isn't it x minus 7, right, equals e squared? See how much easier that was? Boom, right away we're gotten to here. And then add 7 to both sides, and you get e squared plus 7, which, of course, is going to give you the same answer that you got there. So you can see much shorter to just re simply rewrite this from a uh, log equation to an exponential form. So I call that step rewriting in exponential form. I'll just put that for abbreviation, right? I would do that a lot. Going from exponential to logs and logs to ex exponentials is very important. In this unit, it's very handy. It makes it a lot quicker than doing these over here. But again, you should probably know both. Next problem. Okay, this problem's a little bit difficult or a little bit different because you can see here that we have two logs. So we can't rewrite it in exponential notation until we get it down to one. I believe in 9-3, you learned your expanding and condensing properties. And remember, if you have the same base and it's addition, you could rewrite this as one natural log, and then you bring the of parts together, back together again as multiplication. So I'm assuming if you're on 9-5, you remember your expanding and condensing rules that says you can bring that together as multiplication. So that's going to give me 4x squared when I actually multiply that equals 10. And now we're going to use that technique where we're going to raise both sides to base e. So we're going to rewrite this where they both have base e and this is going to become the exponent. And this becomes the exponent. So we rewrote it with both sides having base e. And again, the whole purpose of that is that we can apply the property here that says if you have a base e and it has is raised to a log with that same base, then your answer is just going to be 4x squared. So this side, when we apply that property, that property says this just gives us 4x squared. And then, of course, we're just going to recopy e to the 10th power. Then we have to divide out 4 to both sides. And we have to undo squared by taking the square root. So we've got to take the square root of both sides. And remember, when you take the square root of something that is being uh, to an even power, you have to have that plus and minus. So we got to remember that plus and minus. So our answer is going to give us plus and minus whatever the square root of e to the 10th power divided by 4 is. And if you use a calculator, you're going to get approximately uh, 74.2066. There's a however. Remember that the of part is not allowed to ever be negative. So whatever you find for x, if that was to make the of part negative, then that is called extraneous. So you can see that if we plug in the negative of this answer, so if we plugged in negative, negative. 
74.246, that's going to make that negative. So that actually is extraneous. So therefore, only the positive answer is the final answer, right? So it doesn't have two answers after all. Only really only has one because the negative is going to make that of part negative, which means it's extraneous. Okay. So here's the same problem. Again, we're going to use the expanding condensing properties, which says you can condense this since it's an addition problem and you have the same base. You can rewrite it as one natural log where you rewrite the of parts back as a multiplication. So you multiply those together. And then from here, instead of rewriting it with both having base E, how about just rewriting this equation in exponential form. So to rewrite this in exponential form, don't we say 4x squared equals e to the 10th power? And then of course you still have to divide out the 4. And of course you still have to undo x being squared, so we have to take the square root of both sides. Therefore we need the plus and minus because that's an even and the negative root is going to make that extraneous, so we only have the positive root. Okay, let's go move forward. Next one. Take the net, um, rewrite this where they both have base E. So this becomes the exponent. And that's greater than 5 and the whole purpose of that was because if you have a base e that has a log as the exponent with the same base it just equals the x plus 4 All right subtract 4 from both sides and that gives you e to the fifth power subtract 4 grab your calculator and that's going to give you approximately 144.4132. And again, um, if you wanted to, instead of, instead of rewriting it with the bases being E, you can simply just rewrite this using an exponential notation. And again, since this is greater than, we don't have to worry about this being less than zero. So we can go ahead and just rewrite this in exponential notation. So we say x plus 4 is greater than e to the fifth power. And then from there, subtract 4, and look at how much faster that is. And grab your calculator, and you should get about 144.4132. Okay, and that is the end of this lesson. So we went over all these different types of equations and we talked about some properties that we needed to help us get through some of those units.